Just this weekend was the 8th Philippine International Motor Show and it was great to see some fans of Auto Deal. It was really, really cool to take photos with you guys. But just in case you guys missed it, there are a lot of cars inside, so I'm going to take you through the ABCs of the PIMS. Doesn't really roll off the tongue very well, but anyway, come with me. The only European brand on display at the Motor Show is BMW. They got some pretty cool cars like this. Is this thing purple? It's a purple too. Then they've got the 5 over there. They've even got the monster of a car, which is the M5. But the one that I'm really interested in is the iX. It's a fully electric SUV. Now, the thing about it is, is that not only is it cool, but I'm so excited because we're actually going to get the car very, very soon. And I promise you, if you like and subscribe to our channel, you won't miss out on the review because it will come out, I promise you, in October of this year. The highlight of the Cherry launch was this, the Tigo 8 Pro. Now, it's not obviously new, but what's underneath the hood is new. See, it's a 1.6 liter that you, everybody knows about, but this is actually a 2 liter. I wish I could tell you just exactly how much and what the specifications are inside, but this is more like just a sneak preview of what is going to be available very, very soon. The highlight for me, however, is actually this because this is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. This is also a Tigo 8. Now, the beauty about this automobile is that it has a full electric uh, motor that can run the car fully electric, right? And that can run for anywhere between 80 to 90 kilometers. The full charge of that is about three hours and you can plug it in at home, like a full 220 or 110, well, maybe not a 110 socket, but definitely a 220 socket. And it will charge it in a full three hours. Then of course, when you run out of juice for all electric, it's also got a petrol engine so that it regenerates everything and it charges everything again. So you can keep going and going and going. This makes it a very good transition for those that want to go from a fully gasoline engine to something fully electric, but they just can't because, well, the infrastructure is not ready yet. This is a very good in-between if you think about it. The Photon booth features some passenger vehicles, but it's mostly commercial vehicles. Like for instance, you got a school bus right over there, an Optimus Prime looking truck over there. You got delivery vehicles right there. I like that, that ice cream. That's all well and good, but this one, this particular one is my personal favorite. Why? Simply because of the name. Check this out. Pang Harabas. <laughs> Geely is a brand that I once said before that they were going to be the dark horse of the auto industry because of uh, such a great car and at an available price. And that's exactly what the Cool Ray is and was, was and is rather. And then you can say the same thing about the M Grand too because it kind of took the, the, the Philippines by storm. Now, they're not launching anything new per se here at the auto show, but they are showcasing the bits and bobs that you can put on the automobile to max out your car, whether it's the Cool Ray with the cool wheels and the and the skirts on the bottom and the, the nice color at the bottom or if you're talking about the M Grand with the big huge wheels and some trims up front too looks nice One of the two highlights at the Honda booth is the all new, well not all new, but the HRV RS. So it's basically like the HRV top of the line variant, which is still a 1.5 turbo, but this is dressed a little bit better. It is the RS. Now, some of the changes outside, well, you've got an all new grill, a bit more black spots out here. You've also got new wheels too. Inside, some of the changes or additions would be is that now you've got a lane watch, which is that uh, when you activate the signal light, the camera on the right-hand side turns on, much like you would find on the Civic. The second highlight of the Honda booth is the brand spanking new BRV. 
To be honest with you, we don't have the specifications of the automobile yet. We don't know what's underneath the hood or what specs is going to come out inside, if it's going to be leather or whatnot, but I'm sure Jack will show you a couple of photos of that. But I can tell you this, that once it is actually launched to us media, we're going to do a quick walk around as best as we can or perhaps even a review. So please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out. I was lucky enough to be invited by Hyundai to do a talk on all four of their cars that they recently launched, but not this, the Ionic 5. This is actually the first time I'm seeing it and it is actually very, very gorgeous. It's not less, it's not just pretty on the outside, but it's actually pretty on the inside. But before that, check out these wheels. 20 inch wheels, it's gorgeous, man. It's just very, very different. On the inside, as Jack likes to point out, it actually looks more like a MacBook Pro. Come here, check this out. It's got a nice floating screen up here, two of them actually, and then a steering wheel that kind of looks upside down. But I tell you what, there is a lot of space in the automobile, not just up front, but here, check out the back too. And then also, much like the Staria, it's got pixelated taillights. Look at it. It's like an Adam Sandler movie, only a hell of a lot better. Can we open this guy up? Oh, nice. That's big. That's what she said. The highlight of the Kia booth has got to be this, the EV6. It is Kia's platform on an all-electric vehicle. By the way, before we get started, this right here that you're looking at, this is not a wrap. This is actually paint. Ain't that awesome? And it does look very futuristic. Okay, some highlights about the automobile. Number one is that obviously it's an all-electric vehicle. It's got a 72 kilowatt hour battery inside that will take a maximum of, well, 30 hours to charge it really slow. But there is a charger that you can get, which is located in the back, that you can charge the entire automobile in 1.5 hours. That's a full charge. Next, we talk about range. This particular model that they're bringing in has a range of about 500 kilometers. Now, underneath, or rather under underneath, you're looking at an electric motor that produces roughly about 226 horses, 350 newton meters of torque, and can do zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just 7.2 seconds. Not bad. And if you look at it as a whole, it's very futuristic, isn't it? I mean, look at it, check it out. Two things I want to point out here at the Mazda booth. Number one is that gorgeous automobile up there, surrounded by those many, many people. Uh, that is the MX-5 Miata Club Philippines 25th Anniversary Edition. 25 years, so they came up with that good-looking car. I'd like to bring you up there, but I really can't because, well, it's cordoned off for like high rollers or something. Number two is the booth itself. This is probably the biggest and the, the grandest booth out here. I mean, look at it. It kind of, it, it stretches all the way up there. You've got a CX-8 up there and a CX-9 up there. Doesn't it look like, like the Mazda Rice Terraces or something? Look at it, it's huge. I'm gonna try and sneak up. I don't know, maybe I can get in there. Being a Mitsubishi owner myself could not let the motor show pass without going through the booth. And I am pleasantly surprised because there are two cool products that they have. They're not all new products, but let me show you. This is, as you know, is the Strada. This is actually the GLS model, but it is decked out in rally art stuff. And you can only get the rally art stuff on the GLS model. With the Montero, if you guys remember, there is a uh, variant called the Black Series. This is essentially the Black Series, but now you can have it with the Rally Art stuff. And look at it, it looks badass, man. I can't get this on my Montero, which sucks. I wish I could though. The Nissan booth showcases all of their products available in the Philippines. You're talking about anything from the Patrol all the way down to the Almera. Also, the Kicks is actually also here, which we've already done a review on. You can check it out on our YouTube pages, as well as the Levina. 
these are the two cars that we last did a review on. But what really caught my attention, sort of like the highlight for me, has got to be the GTR. Now, I know it's all about uh, electri uh, uh, electric uh, cars and zero emissions and good for the environment, but there is something. There's just got to be something to be said about Godzilla, especially in this color. See, this color is actually inspired by the R34 GTR. This is Bayside Blue, and it is, my goodness, this thing is gorgeous, man. Look at this automobile. There is no, no, there's no way to describe just exactly how crisp and clean and clear this color is. You just want to dive in it and swim in it. Of course, all the emissions are going to come out. It's nothing like, let's say, for example, the Leaf. But yeah, what a car. What a car. The Suzuki booth pretty big, actually, and it's nice because all the cars that we've reviewed are actually here. The highlight of this particular booth has got to be the Ortiga. Now, it's not your just average on the main Ortiga, obviously. It's now got a hybrid system to it, a 12-volt hybrid system, a mild hybrid system. So what makes it different is now this particular automobile is even more fuel efficient than the previous generation. And there's also a lot of technologies that I'm seeing on this car just with my eyes, like uh, not even the spec sheet or anything. For one, is that there's a camera up here on front on the windshield, and then there's an also another camera here on the front clip. So I'm assuming that there's got to be a 360 degree system too, right? Yes, there is. There's a camera right here. And then in addition to that, there's also what I didn't expect to see on Ortiga is a power tailgate. I've never seen that on this type of MPV before, on this kind of affordable MPV. Affordable, yes, I'm not exactly sure just exactly how affordable it's going to be, but I hope to find out real soon on Audi. Toyota is the number one car company in the Philippines for good reasons, because they make a lot of great passenger vehicles. But it's just so cool that a car company like Toyota can still make cars that will ignite your senses, quite literally, like this, the Supra. Ain't it friggin' awesome? We do have a review of the Supra quite some time ago, but if you'd like to see it, I'm sure the links are somewhere above or down below. Over here on this side, it's a car that we actually haven't reviewed yet, but I want to, because this is the GR86, man. The balance of this car is friggin' awesome. Underneath is a 2.4 liter boxer engine. It produces 234 horses and 205 newton meters of torque. The gearbox is either a six-speed manual or a six-speed automatic with paddles. And last but certainly not the least is, of course, the baby, if you can even call it a baby, it's more like a wolf in sheep's clothing, which is the GR Yaris. This is just, this is like the tiniest sleeper I've ever seen in my entire life. And it's so particularly cute. This car surely knows how to have a hell of a good time, which we did on our review. Check it out either on the links above or somewhere down below.